Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and welcome you to our 21st. I think 21st, yeah. Yeah, 21st lecture of creating a complete inventory management system by using Laravel and Flutter, meaning that we're making a Flutter project or a mobile application powered by a Laravel dashboard. So those are the kind of technologies, if you master them, you will never be broke because there's a lot, a lot of opportunities out there. We always do 40 minutes, so I've started our counter. So in our today's lecture, we are going to start a brand new uh, chapter. Uh, remember, we have achieved uh, the previous chapters whereby we looked at uh, getting started with Laravel, we created the project, integrated Laravel admin, we learned how to create an API, we tested our API, it was working perfectly, and then we learned different techniques of creating dynamic API, we, we then went ahead and deployed our project, we learned how to deploy the project, and we successfully uh, deployed our project. Up to now, we have our postman that we can use to test the what, the API, and now we are starting another uh, last part of the journey, which is creating the mobile application that is going to be powering our what our web application, and that is uh, Laravel. I mean, that is uh, our dashboard that we just created for Laravel admin. So, with that much said, let's get it straight into our today's business. So, I hope at this point you have uh, created everything up to this level of having the API and you have already deployed your what uh, your project so you're going to integrate the api that you created with a heart to the project that you're going to be doing so with that much said let's get started so first things first uh i believe i hope right now you have the basics of flutter if you don't have the basics of flutter on my youtube channel this very youtube channel i've already uh, created a very good list of a playlist of different kind of lectures that can get you started with flutter from zero up to the level when you're able to create a what a mobile application so we're going to use that knowledge just to add more or to put that knowledge together in order to come up with a what with the project that we're going to do right now so in the previous project so i'm, I'm just showing you the techniques that you need okay in real world so in the previous project you remember of flutter we created different user interfaces something like this we had these these interfaces the cards the what everything like almost every example of something we had created it in what in this user interface drag and drop all those things uh we did them in what in the previous uh training of user interfaces so I'm going just to show you that how we can turn now such a kind of a thing to become important to us and start making now different what? A different projects basing on that. We created login forms, all those things we did what? We did create them. So right now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use that very project to be our benchmark project. However, I'm just going to delete to, to, to remove the unnecessary things and then i will give you the source code of the benchmark project i will not give you the source code of the whole project but i'll give you the source code of the benchmark project meaning that the source code that i'll give you it is going to have the necessary packages that you need to get started with and then uh all the packages that you need to get started with and also maybe the assets and the, all the the assets and then after the, uh, the assets and then maybe some dummy data that you can use for practicing, only those ones, okay? The packages and the assets. So you'll have to clone that project, okay? You'll have to clone that project and then after, or you'll have to download that project and make it yours or you can, what you, you can do what you call forking. You fork it and make it yours and then you create your own repository and then just copy that project and put in that project that you'll have created your own and then after use that project to get started with what you're going to do however you can also as well start from scratch but uh, it will save your time uh, to use that technique just 
uh, clone what I will have shared with you or just download it as a zip then remove my github and then go ahead and create it as your own and then add the rest of things that I'm going to teach you I'm going to train all that we're going to do together so all right this is the project that we had done before so I'm just going to benchmark on this one I'll just remove unnecessary things and then we do something from scratch basing on this very project all right so how is this project structured let us first see how this project project is structured all right so how is this project structured so this project is having uh, pulse the yamo these are the yamo things and then it has uh, git ignore this git ignore has a uh, th thing that we don't need to be uh, compiled and pushed to our github so this is good here and then we have the lib so this lib it has a uh, different thing that we're going to need and then we have the what uh, the assets so they are the assets whether maybe we may not need assets all these assets just for wasting our storage because right now we're going now to do the real world project and then it has maybe the android folder so here what i'm going to need i'm just going to need this pulse i'm going to need um in this in this uh, widget i mean sorry i'm going to need these widgets the widgets i'll need them i'm going to need uh these screens i'm not going to need them so i'll get rid of the screens i'll only remain with my menu route or the main menu and then i'm going to need um the models i don't think that we need any model so we shall also get rid of the models and then we shall get rid uh, of the dummy data we don't need dummy data and also we don't need adapters we shall create our own so that's the thing that we're going to need okay so uh the best thing that we're going to need just are the widgets okay these widgets and the settings then the rest uh, we don't need them okay so we're going to use this one to benchmark okay on our project so let me show you how we benchmark so what i'm going to do i'm just going to open this project in a folder okay i'm going to begin by okay let's begin by creating our own project okay i don't know <laughs> let's just let's just uh okay let me just show you let me open this project in our folder in the in its folder so i can just right click on any folder here and let's say open in finder if you're using windows if you're using mac say reveal in finder if you're using windows say open in explorer or show in explorer or something like that so this is our project the one that we are used to create the one that we used to create our what our ui so i'm just going to duplicate it i'm just going to duplicate it okay i'm just showing you how you benchmark so let's say that you've just downloaded the zip that i've told you to download okay from our project the one that i'm going to share with you so you just go ahead and duplicate it so this is the one okay so flutter ui i'm just going to control c control v okay do they control they can i cannot duplicate in the same location okay no problem i can just simply create a new project uh just create a new folder here ah uh, so sorry just click this All right so Flutter UI. Alright, so I think it's under GitHub and then Flutter UI. This is the one, okay? So I come this folder, I copy it, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Ah, okay, I cannot paste it there. Let me create just a new folder. So I come this folder and I create a new folder on the same. I just say new folder. I wanted it to be on top here. Alright, I just want it to be on top here in github itself okay in github so if i come to GitHub here and i right click new folder here okay, in github it's a new folder all right so new folder i'm going to call it inventor inventor track underscore mobile Okay, get on as well. So this is the project. Okay, Velo Track Mobile. This one here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this uh the whole this bootstrap UI 
okay okay let me just select all the files in there so you have to make sure that even the hidden files are shown okay so if you want to show hidden files just press uh control and shift and dot it will show you and full stop to show you the hidden files if you're using mac if you're not using mac just go to click on the top there where there's a folder then you'll see the view i think you'll see view after seeing view you'll see where there is option then you click on options and then you see you, you you'll see a drop down and then go to that i mean that list and then see where there is a uh, hide hide uh, something like this there's, there's something that you have to check say i say that hide uh, file extensions you make it visible and then say hide hidden files something like that you make you uncheck it so it can be able to show even the hidden files so for mac you just press control control i mean command and then shift and then full stop it will hide and unhide some files that are supposed to be hidden so in here i'm just going to copy everything so i just say control control a uh okay of course i may not copy everything so I may not copy github okay this dot git don't copy it because it's the one that has the github repository and everything okay so don't copy dot git all right you may not copy the dot uh, you may not copy don't copy don't copy build you can build our own from again from scratch all right uh don't copy don't copy what don't copy I think that's all. Don't copy build. Um, yeah, those are enough. Just, but the main point is don't copy dot git. Okay, even if you download my project, I mean okay this project that I'm just going to give you. So don't copy dot git. Okay, so go ahead and copy the rest. Ah, uh, okay. So I hope right now you're not even doing this because I'm going to give you the code. Okay. So I'll come here now to my project, Invader Track Mobile, and then I paste there. So that's finished pasting, okay? So I'll go ahead and create a repository, okay? I create a repository for this one. So make sure that you don't have GitHub. Make sure that you don't have GitHub. Make sure that you don't have .git in here. Dot .git in here, don't have it. Otherwise, if you don't, if you have it, then you'll have not created another repository. So you see, under Inverter Track, I have my projects files there. So I'm going to just create a new repository. Okay. So to create a new repository, I just simply copy this one, this 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 folder. I drag and drop it on what? On uh, this Inverter Track folder, mobile. I drag and drop it. I drag and drop it. No, I think before we do that. Before we create a repository, let's first um, remove things that we don't need. Okay, so let me show you things that we don't need. We can remove them from Android Studio. Okay, that is okay. So let me go ahead to Android Studio. So let me close everything. Let me close everything. Okay, so I'll go to my project, Inverter Track Mobile. I'll drag and drop it in Android Studio. Okay, all right. So after doing that, uh, now I'm going to remove the things that I don't need. Okay, let me start my emulator. All right, so it's there. I'm going to remove the things that I don't need. Okay. So come here and make sure that you do compose it. So, so let me remove the thing that I don't need as we discussed. So I'll need this main. I'll need it. All right. Widgets, I'll need them. These are just some widgets that we need. Okay. Screens, I don't need all the screens. Okay. I only need this main route. So I can just select all the folders for the other screen. That's why it is important to organize your code. So I'll select all the folders and remove them. Control and delete. I shall want to delete. Yes, I delete. So they are gone. 
so i'll get some awnings aha uh -huh. the models i'll remove all of them i'll just remain with my empty model folder all right so i remove all the models i just say delete anyway aha uh -huh. this data Mm, dummy data i can just remove this dummy i just remove i leave these others colors and the rest this one i will need them for just settings and uh, okay then adapters i don't need adapters let me delete the whole fold of adapters all right so now let's fix this small error that is here okay so i can just simply remove everything that is throwing an error here let me remove okay so i'm seeing a lot of errors so i can just simply come here list tile and i just collapse this one and i remove everything uh, from home here so i can just simply change this one to uh, main screen so this is a plain project okay let's try to run it it should be very plain you see there's nothing there only that is our packages that we need so you can if you want to create this one from scratch you can pause the video and add these packages because they're the one that you're going to need to get started however i'm going to give you the link where you can download this very project that you're going to start with so let me go ahead and uh, run this basic project and we see how it looks like all right so for the first time it can take time uh -huh. it is successful so you can see it is there uh, main screen all right so it may it may override your your project name so what you need to do you need to change the package but i'll show you how to change the package name okay so you can see we are here on the main screen so it has successfully uh started okay so this is the project that i'm going to give you this plain one and then the rest we are going to now build on these plain things okay we're going to build on these plain things i'm just giving you some few data settings i'm giving you the i'm giving you i'm not even counting the screen i'm giving you just these widgets Okay, I'm giving you the widgets and then I'm giving you the what? Um, the packages. That's all. Just It's just a plain flutter project. There's nothing big that is there. All right. So uh, let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and, and create this now as a GitHub repository. So I'll stop this. So this is our project that is already running. So I'm going to create it as a GitHub repository. So I'll come here to our inverted track, Bobo, and then I drag and drop it in GitHub. For me, that's the simplest way I create repositories. So I just say create repository, okay? So they will tell you that that does not exist. So just click on say create repository. All right, so I'm going to call this one. The name is going to be inverted track mobile. Okay, that's the name of our project. The other one is web, the other one, this one is mobile. So after doing that, I think that's all. That's all we need. All right. Git ignore. I mean, leave that one. We can just select for for Flutter. I hope the Flutter is there. You can just select that. Hope that is there. But we already have Git ignore. Okay. So go ahead and say create repository so you'll see now our dot git folder has come back okay so it comes back that's the only identity of the project so i'll go ahead and publish this okay so it's going to be 
Inveto Inveto Truck Mobile. That's the name of the project. I'll go ahead and publish it, okay? So I'll publish it on my repository. So I'll not keep it private because I want you to be able to get this code to start with. Then I say publish repository. So it is processing. Now it has finished publishing the, the what? It has finished publishing. So I'm going to give you now this link. If you're on GitHub, I'm going to, get to give you this link. So you'll just come here and say download. Then after downloading, uh, this basic repository that I'll have shared with you. You go ahead and remove dot git folder after you've unhide all the hidden files. Okay, if you don't know how to unhide the hidden files on your computer, just search on internet how to unhide hidden files on Windows. You'll you see the steps. So go ahead and download this and then delete the .kit folder that you'll have there. So that's it. That's it. And then go ahead and then drag and drop it in your what? In your, uh, in your Android Studio and then uh, run it. Okay, and then run it. All right, so that's it. I think that's it and that's it so uh there we'll have the basic code that we're going to start with i've just shown you the steps you may not even need for the step just download this basic project and make sure that you run it and it should be running okay so by doing like that ah we should be good to get started all right so let's get started without wasting any minute okay let's get uh, started all right without wasting any minute uh, let's get started so I'm going to go ahead. How many minutes are remaining with anyway? Okay, 18 minutes. Maybe 18 minutes we can finish with the login. All right, so let's get started now. Let's face it. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to work on the, on the what? On the login screen, all those things. So I already have my project that I have, which has a lot of user interfaces. So I'll be just borrowing user interfaces there as we implement them. Okay. Let me just run it. All right, so we're going to begin by creating the registration screen. After registration screen, we work, uh, we do what? We, after registration screen, we, we do the login, as we see how we communicate, we communicate with what with our database. So there's a lot of things that you're going to learn. Just get ready. Okay, so it is uh, processing. <laughs> it is processing. I'm just trying to put my what my 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 compiler in here. All right. So as it is compiling, um, so. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need, we're going to need a user model, uh, the one that we're going to use, of course, to log in someone, and also maybe even before we reach that user model. So we're going to need a local database where we shall be saving someone who is logged in. Okay, then uh, in that local database, it's will be saving someone who is logged in, and also. Uh, we have to determine which database we're going to be using as this one is going to as this one is is, is compiling. So we're going to use SQ flight. We're going to use SQ flight in our what as our local database. So uh, let's go ahead and add the SQ flight package in our local database. So just simply come here and say SQ SQ flight. Uh, let me see if it's not there in our packages. I think I'd added it already. Let me see if it's in there. Okay, it is there. It's already there. Let me see if it is updated. It's 
say there is 0.3 let me just change this one to 0 0.3 0.3.0 okay and then i go ahead and apply it all right so all right so that's it that's it okay let's let's upgrade all right so the first thing we're going to need we're going to need of course the user model okay so we're going to need the user model all right so um we're going to need the user model uh, because the user is going to be registered using our what our, our using a model so let's go ahead and and start as this one is compiling let's go ahead and start our project all right so the user model so just simply come here and say new new what new file i'm going to call this one logged in user dot that okay so this is our class for the logged in user so this is where we'll be saving the information of someone who is logged in in this table in this uh or in this what in this model so that is our what our model i've created it on the file so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going now to go ahead and create a class for this model so i say class and i call it logged in user Okay, so logged in user. We can we can even decide to be putting here the word mode if you want to log in user mode or something like this. Okay, but I don't think we need that word mode at the end of it. Alright, so this is going to have almost same information as the logged in user in the what in our online version. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to our local database, I mean to our log database and go to admin users. Okay. And then I just go ahead and copy the name of the columns. Okay, so I just put here my cursor and I copy these columns. I select them, okay? I just put it here and then I drag and drop down in order to select them. So I copy those names and then come here and create a, a comment, a block comment by just opening the stars and closing them and then I paste those names here. All right, so I'm going to create a variable for each of these ones, okay? So let's go ahead and create a variable. So our first uh, value is ID. So ID we know online is an integer, so you can say integer, and then I make it by default to become zero. Okay, so ID is done. Okay, the next thing is username. So the username is string, so I'll come here and just simply say string, and then, so I'll show you how you can automate this. Right now, let's first do manual. So password, I don't think we need password, okay? I don't think we need password, okay, but you can just, okay, keep it just for the sake of empty. All right, so then we shall need the name of a person who is logged in. So the name of a person who is logged in, uh, his photo, okay, his avatar. So everything here, we're going to need just, remember token, I don't think we need that one, let's just put it for the sake. So create that, let's just put for the sake and update that, let's just put it also there. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how you can automate this. Okay, for now, just watch. So company, so even if company ID is an integer, I'll just keep it as a string just to save my energy of conversion. Only the ID will keep it as an integer, the rest will be string. All right, so for number two, Phone number and then the address put here the address and then the six the six and then dob i go and put the dob as a string i mean status and then put their status so the active or not and then email then put the email All right so that's it i think that's it all right that's it those are the information that you need about these and i've just copied this one basing on the what on the table that is online all right, think that's, I think that's it. So this guy is still compiling as he has taken too long. <laughs> All right, so after doing that, as he's compiling, no problem. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. This guy is taking too long to compile. I don't know why. All right, let me also compile this one as this, the other one, the other one is completing. I don't know, let you not confuse the emulator to have two things compiling in the same emulator okay so let me compile now what i'm going to do i'm going to create like a home menu 
where I'm going to first create all the screens that is going to navigate to all the screens okay and then when I finish all the screens I'll just now align them okay so this is our app okay our main screen okay so I'm going to put here the link that is going to be leading us to the login okay then after the I went to the register the register we do the login after the login we do like everything so once we finish everything then we shall align them so we can even use our what our um, our um, <coughs> our what our um, our API to guide us on what we should start with and what we should go next. So let me extend it there. All right. So now let's go ahead and begin with the register screen. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and come here to our main. Our menu route. All right, so I'm going to put here uh, the list style for register screen. So you can see there we have our register. Okay, so I want when I click here, it should take me to the what? the register screen all right this guy has finally finished okay so i want to when, when i click there it should take me to the part to the register screen so you can see here it is just a tile and uh, okay it is just a tile and it has the text of register list style that has a text of what a text of register Okay, so I want when someone clicks here, it should be he should take us to the what to the list of register here. When I, when someone clicks here, it should take us to the list of register register screen. So as we finish all our screen, then we shall connect them. Okay, you get the point. All right, so um, let's go ahead. So if you can see here, the registration and login they are in a, in a what in. A, in a folder called auth authentication so let's go ahead and do the folder here in under screens and we do a folder of authentication under screens we we'll do a folder of authentication okay so i'm going to create now a screen for the register so i'll just simply come here and say new file and then i say I'm putting it under authentication and I say register screen dot that so that's going to be a registration screen then after I'll go ahead and do a stateful widget paste there register screen and then import everything I can remove this Alright, so I'll come here. <clears throat> okay, I'll come here and just change this one, maybe. Okay, just it is a placeholder. Now I want to when someone clicks on the register button, it should be taken to this register screen. So I'll come to our main menu and then come here, put get dot two, then open point it at register screen like this. Right, let me import this and also import this one. All right, so that's it. So, I want when someone clicks here, it should be taken to register screen. All right, so let's try that. Click there, you're taking the register screen. Hope you can see that. 
although to see in Bude, now we have just started the business okay so in this register screen i'm going to come here and um and just try you see there is just only placeholder so i can just simply come here and put maybe a scaffold Right, so I put the scaffold and just we just put um, <clears throat> and we just put our register screen. All right, this sucks. I'm not anything. Right, so after doing that, uh, after making sure that, uh, okay, we are there, so I can be able to access this registration screen. Okay, I can be able to access the registration screen here by clicking on register. All right, okay, so now I'm going to come here to the registration screen, and then I will put down registration form. So as I told you, I already have my inspiration. Okay, I already have uh, like uh, uh, my user interfaces that I can pick the inspirations from. Okay, so instead of creating things from scratch, I'll be just looking at the form that can work for me and then implement that one. That's why I told you that creating your user interfaces are really very unique, are very useful. So I can use this registration form. I can use this one. I think I'm going to use this one. Okay, to do what? To do my registration. Let me pick the one that is nice for me. Okay. To have another one here and uh, login. Can use this one, or we can use this. I can use this one, uh, this one, so there are so many, but I'm going to choose one and then use that one. All right, I think uh, let us use uh, this one. Let's use this one. All right, okay, so um, we're going to design this, okay, so it's called what? It's called a sample stack. All right, we're going to use that one. Okay, so what you're going to do we're going to design that the registration screen and then implement everything we're going to design it together so don't worry that things are not going to become complicated no we're going to design it together so it's under login so you can also use your user interfaces that we developed the other time to benchmark from them however it is good idea to first design your user interfaces but for the sake of saving time for now for now let's just concentrate on the logic so the user interface will not take much of our time. So it is under the section of login, under login, under it's called login duck, simple duck. Okay, so we're going to create it together. So you don't need to have this one, I'm just going to show you how I can create it together. So the first thing that we're going to do, just put that here. Call me the second emulator, but for now it's okay. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to begin by by doing your heart by adding um by adding the scaffold. So the scaffold you already have it. Okay. Then after the scaffold, we're going to put um
resize to avoid bottom so i come here and put let me first switch to a project this one here resize to avoid bottom go ahead and put it there okay so this i think this is a registration screen yes okay so after doing that we go ahead and add the background color so the background color i'm going to put there a primary color okay so that's our background color so i'm just going to put there a primary color so colors dot primary so this is going to be a background color however i'm going to come and change this primary color and do the other color that we had done before i mean that that was that is on the web okay our time is up <laughs> our time is up i think we shall start from there in the next lecture we are going to design our registration screen together step by step put there the registration logic how can connect to the api register someone login someone all those things we're going to do them with what in the next lecture how you can create the theme of your project of your of your of your system so it can look much more better all those things are going to do them in the what in the next lecture so make sure that you don't miss so i'm going to push this one to this uh, project that i've just shown you so what you'll do is just come and download this link i mean and download the report that i've just told you download the zip and then start it from there then you're going to see how you can connect the what with the mobile application i mean with the api all right i think i've done a lot and if you can reach this point then it will be great let's meet from there let me let, let, let's start from there in the next lecture so make sure that you also subscribe to our youtube channel so you can always get updated every time we upload a new video so in the next lecture we're going to begin the registration we do the login logic we do the login after the login we log in someone and work also on the logout then after doing all those things then we see now how we can start now creating the inventory category uh inventory subcategory inventory stock using the what using the api and i'll also show you the technique that you can use to generate the models to generate even the forms so there's a lot uh of things or techniques that you're going to learn in this what in this course so all, all what you do you need to do is to really get ready and not uh, have plans of giving up until we finish the whole project all right uh, goodbye and see you in the next lecture